Hi friends, this is Sivrama Krishnan from Sincere Syndication. We are living in a country where products get sold faster when they are on discount. While the customers may not be aware that the prices might have been increased only for the sake of providing a discount. The word discount sells. So therefore, Indians are very cost conscious and they are not quality conscious. What does it result in? Certain essential, essential things in life gets missed out since we don't want to pay for it, isn't it? Such is the case with something very important we are going to talk about today. What is that? While we insure our two-wheelers, while we insure our cars, we are not insuring the biggest asset that our family has got. What is that? It's our own selves, it's your life, right? While we insure our car, we are not insuring our life. Does it not sound like a great anomaly? That's what it is, my friends. Very little, small percentage of India's population is God itself insured for all important life. That's a very important thing. It's such a very important thing, but grossly must out. Let's separate insurance from investment. People invest a lot with endowment policies and money back policies in India. Let's cite an example. Let's take some hardcore numbers. Let's look, let's look at this. For a man of 30 years of age, if 30 years of cover, term cover is required to be taken, he's got two options. One, if he wants to go for a cover of 2 crores, if it's going to be an endowment policy, is going to pay up a premium of rupees 1 lakh 50 thousand per month or rupees 18 lakhs per annum because the cover is only about 11 times of the premium paid. In order to get a cover of 2 crores, is going to pay up a premium of about roughly about 18 lakhs per annum. Sounds stupid, isn't it? With GST added up, it's going to be higher than that, right? Now, instead of going for an endowment policy, which most of us adopt, if he is intelligent enough to go for a term insurance. The same 30 years of cover for a cover of 2 crores is going to cost him less than 2 lakhs per annum. I am talking about a man who is about little less than 40 years of age. While he is spending less than 2 lakhs, he is going to conserve the rest of 16 lakhs per annum. Isn't it? which he would have otherwise incurred in taking up this endowment policy. This 16 lakhs, if invested wisely, to grow at 11 percentage per annum, which is quite practical and possible in Indian context, it's going to become a figure of, an astounding figure of, figure of 27.41 crores after 30 years, while it would have been a measly 4.82 crores after 30 years if it had been invested in endowment policy. Now, choose yourself as to which one is the better one for yourself. Go for term insurance and stay away from this endowment and money back policies. Right? That's the best option for you. Now, here are the questions that we often get. What's the period of cover that people should go for? That is, should I cover myself for a period of period until 60 years of age, 70 years of age, or should it be farther, further than that? Our reply to that is this. The most, let's not forget that the longer we pay the term insurance for, we are it's more or less sure that somebody in our family is going to get that or some, one of your nominees is going to get that. Today, insurance companies offer cover to as much as 85 years of age, until 85 years of age. Let's say you're going to lead a full life until 85 years of age and leave at the, on the last day of your 85th year. Please be sure that your grandchildren or children or any of your nominees is going to get that amount of the amount insured, right? But if you're going to be covered only until 70 years of age or 75 years of age, there's quite a likelihood that one may not, nobody could get that amount because the average Indian age today is somewhere between 70 to 80 years of age, isn't it? Therefore, go until the maximum cover possible, which is 85 years of age. There are insurance policies which offer 100 years of cover. I don't think you need to go for that, right? 85 years is good enough. Therefore, go for the maximum cover that is maximum years of cover that is possible for you. Yes. What's the amount of insurance cover that I should go for? Let's understand that with some facts and figures. Uh, why, why do you need this cover for? This is going to be the cover that's going to take care of your family in the absence of the earning member of the family, God forbid, right? 
So, what are the expenses that need to to be that need to be covered? Number one, the cost of your children's education, the cost of your children's marriage, and the cost of retirement of the family in the absence of the earning member. If these were the three essentials that need to be covered, let's understand the cost that needs to be covered, right? Which will be the insured amount, right? Now, if 75,000 rupees were to be the monthly expenses of a family, for a 40-year-old man who is going to retire at the age of 58, you know what's the amount of uh, retirement corpus that is required? At the point of retirement, it's going to be about 6.52 crores for the family to be, lead, to be able to lead the, rest, the same lifestyle for the rest of their lives. 6.52 crores. Cost, let's say the cost of one's daughter's education is going to be rupees 50 lakhs today. I'm talking about UG and PG. Then the same 50 lakhs is going to be 1 crore if it has to be incurred 8 years from now. Right? If you're going to be incurring 50 lakhs today, the same is going to cost 1 crore 8 years from now. So therefore, if you got 2 children in your family, you need to take care of, look at covering about 2 crores for the sake of education and maybe about 5 to 7 crores for the cost of retirement. Meaning that the cost of replacement value of the earning member of the family is going to be as much as 6 crores to 10 crores for a middle class family, middle to upper class family. right? Please cover yourself my friends at least for an amount of 5 crores which is definitely required for the common households today. If you are going to be covering for 5 crores, the premium is going to be few lakhs of rupees that needs to be paid. How do I meet the cost of insurance every year that needs to be paid for? Right? The best way to do that would be to go for a monthly SIP in debt funds. At the end of 12 months, take out the value of the amount accumulated and use that to make up the payment of premium that needs to be paid for term insurance. What should be the term of, term of payment for this term insurance? Should we pay for the entire life? That is, if the policy cover is going to be for a period of until 85 years of age, should we pay for the entire 85 years? The answer to this would be, would, would depend on your age, my friends. If let's say one is 40 years of age, it's better to pay up the term insurance premium during the best course of earnings of one's life, right? Meaning that the ideal term of payment would be about 10 or 12 years for somebody who is 40 years of age. It's, it's very unlikely that somebody is going to pay up for term insurance premium after 50, 50 years of age. Therefore, keep it within the best of your earnings period, which could be perhaps for 10 or 12 years in most cases for a middle-aged person. Which company to go for, for term insurance? I am not going to be here to make a marketing recommendation to choose a particular company, but I will tell you the basis on which you can choose a company which you should need to go for. Let me tell you our view of things. We generally look out for companies uh, that have been around for the last several decades because term insurance, the benefit of the term insurance could perhaps be realized by us 30 years from now or 40 years from now. Therefore, we need to choose a company or a group that is a corporate group which will be in existence after 30 or 40 years from now. How do we know? How do you know which company will be there after 30 or 40 years from now? The best way to gauge that would be to look back to understand as to how many years this particular group has been in existence, right? So, uh, uh, groups such as HDFC, Tata, or uh, an ICACA, or uh, Aditya Bula have been around for several years. So, we can assume safely that they will be around for the next 30, 40 years ahead. Number two, I would generally prefer a group, a company which has got its roots in India. That is a company that is not largely an MNC. In the sense, I wouldn't go for a, an insurance company which is 76 percent owned by a foreign company. I would always prefer an Indian company, right? Number three, the ethical values of the corporate group. I would prefer a company with group with high ethical values. Number four, the, the all important settlement ratio. Definitely, please choose your insurance company which has got the highest of settlement ratios. You can look up at IRDS website which will show up the settlement ratios. Any settlement ratio of more than 98 percentage could rank amongst the best. Therefore, choose your insurance company carefully. Uh, go for the top five or six of insurance companies in India. You don't need to go below that. Therefore, please cover yourself with a term insurance and invest the rest of the money wisely. And please do remember these five points that we discussed today on term insurance. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. 
and stay in shoe. Thank you.